Hey yo chicos and chicas, it's Kitty and I'm back with chapter 4. So now we are going to see what our buddy Seth has gotten himself into this time. There is no turning back. I have made my mind. I'm ready. Go on, do it. Do it. Oh, do it. Wow. So I'm guessing that has to do with him joining their whatever the heck it is. Cult. I don't know. Skibberino. Well, that's pretty. Can you see all these stars twinkling in the black outer abyss? All the constellations traced by human eyes in long distant eras? Look now to the forest in the valley, to the old tower, from the last tree in the distance to the stars in the sky. And even the stones beneath our feet are just silhouettes that hide the truth from our poor senses. Ancient shadows that hang over the veal that hides the world. As if it were the curtain of a theater, the veal separates the truth from the lie. The veal is a place, Seth, a place of mists. Anthony's great abilities brought you here, but his influence will soon fade away. The mask lie of lies will descend over your eyes once again. Whoa. You must find the door, as I did. The door that gives passage through the veal. Open it, and we will walk together beyond the mist. I suppose you are wondering why I called you so urgently. I cannot deny it. Your letter was truly mysterious. I've been traveling, Doctor, to Scotland. Have you heard the have you heard about the massacre of St. Gills? Why yes, the tragic event has been the continued object of speculation and grim humor rumor in every newspaper in England. For weeks now, Pamphlets have claimed that all kinds of macabre things took place. I don't know if I said that right. But I don't understand how all this is connected, how all this is connected with my patient. He was there. I'm afraid he is one of the victims. Dear God. Uh... Are you telling me my patient has been murdered? Murdered? Thankfully, no. Please excuse me for alarming you. I did not mean to give you this impression. Heard Seth was attacked but survived. What happened to him then? It seems the criminal was caught by Heard Seth in the midst of the act. He then tried, tried to do the same thing to Seth that he had done to the others. Fortunately, the nuns arrived in time to unearth him from the coffin. Her Seth was hospitalized. The nurses report that he remained unconscious for an entire day. What was Seth doing there? 
Many years ago, the St. Gill's Hospital was a boarding school. It appears that both their patient and Mr. Beechworth spent a part of their youth there together. We can assume that her Seth was investigating something. He believes who he had found a clue related to his friend's death. What was the cause of those awful deaths? No one knows for sure. The victims were inflicted with terrible wounds. All of them had an expression of utmost terror on their faces. I, expect, I suspect you did not find Mr. Seth in the hospital. Indeed. He was already gone by the time I arrived. I have not been able to determine where his, his whereabouts since. I see. What conclusions do you draw from all of these circumstances? I have some theories, but I would prefer not to reveal them until evidence have unfolded. In all of them, there is a fundamental element whose roles have not been revealed. And what leads you to this conclusion? It is something that the Holy Sisters found beside her Seth with the coffin. An empty hydro, hypoder, hypodermic needle with traces of an unknown substance. Chapter Four, Ancient Shadows. I'm sure this is the place. Alexander's house must be just ahead. All right. It's latched. I can't open from this side. No one is answering. Perhaps I should go inside anyway. I'll just tell the household that I'm an old friend come to visit. Are you sure about that? All right. So, let's see. Footsteps. There must be someone upstairs. A strange woman stares down at me, glaring with a silent reproach in my, at my tru intrusion. Uh, well, let's see what this is, what this place is. It could be Penvency Castle, but in this painting, the garrison is not in the ruins, is not in ruins. Huh. An old, a couple of old teacups sit on the table. One of them is full and still warm. So that means someone is still in the house. Someone's in the house. So if there's a teak up there, someone is definitely in this house. The heck? Where am I? Oh, don't do that to me. <laughs> An oil lamp. Take it. All right. It's a diary. The last thing written, it, this is the last thing written, the last pages have ripped off. October 12th, 1887. It's been a while since I can't devote any time to this diary for reasons beyond my control. An event most tra tragic has taken place in this house. Mr. Dupree has gone ill, immersed in an everlasting stupor from which it seems he shall not return anytime soon. Since the accident, I patiently take care of him. 
The doctor's treatment don't seem to do any good. I feed him like a child and make sure that all of the sculptures in the house are turned towards the wall. What else can I do? October 13th, 1887. The clockmaker just left. He has done such a good job. In the end, Mr. Dupree is not going to be able to notice the change in the clocks he, that he has so insistently requested. In his state, time will not be a problem anymore. This looks like the diary of a member of the Alexander household. What happened to them? All right. Now we're in the backyard. Okay. All right, so we have that little gate thing open, so that's a good thing. All right, now we'll go upstairs. Alrighty. Alexander. Alexander, it's me, Seth. I'm sorry if I startled you. Is everything all right? Why are you sitting in a wheelchair? Are you hurt, maybe? Can you stand? He is staring blankly at some distant point, as if he has not heard my question at all. What's you, you told me I should come here, and I came as soon as I could. Can you tell me what is happening here? He gives no answer, but, it, but persistently stares at something nearby. He seems to be in some kind of hypnotic, hypnotic trance. When I was downstairs, I could have sworn I heard footsteps. Were there yours, or it, there is someone else in this house? For a moment, I felt a flash of hope that he was looking at me, but is unresponsive. Alexander, please say something. I don't know what to do. I don't understand just what happened to him. Well, out we go then. Wait, let's look let's look at some stuff around that room. There's a cuckoo clock is covered with dust. It seems to be missing the an important piece, the bird. Ooh. That's not good. The face of the clock has been turned. A misty dock overlooks a great ocean. Gulls wheel overhead. Well, let's go then. A portrait of an old man, maybe a ship captain. It looks like he is trying to guard his guard this chest with his stern stare. A huge chest made of oak wood. There's a large hook inside. I'll take this hook. There was a fragment of a diary under the hook. August 5th, 1887. I can't work in the basement anymore. Those wretched sculptures. I feel them stalking me in the darkness. I know it's not possible, but I can hear the crunches, the flapping wings, stone grinding on stone. They're frozen paroxysms with what diabolical art were those gestures conceived? An eternal movement, attention, an impossible struggle to get back the life they never had. I might place them outdoors in the greenhouse and let the mold devour them and wasps make nests of their hollow hearts. Well... Okay, then. All 
All right. A large envelope of black felt covered in dust and ashes. It was. It is labeled with a warning. Do not open it under white light. Okay. A picture of an angel with a gentle face. A bus with his face turned around. The shelf is lined with strange and complex books. Some, in, some titles include The Movements of Shadows, Preserving the Mind, and Lessons Beyond Nature. This seems like, this seems an invoice. May this document serve as a record of the payment made corresponding to the following work. The cuckoo clock mechanism has been modified to give the strokes exclusively at quarter past six in the afternoon. In addition, a special device and a switch have been added to synchronize all clocks in the house. Okay. camera tripod. They had tripods back then? Pictures hanging from a cord. They look as if they were improperly de developed. You can hardly distinguish anything. Are those those ones where you shake them or what? I don't know. A lamp is hailing painting from the ceiling. Its bulb casts an intense white light. Why would you do that? Okay. The image of a couple wearing rat masks at a festival. Okay. A jar glass, I mean, <laughs> a glass jar containing a yellow substance. The label reads cyanide. Okay. It's a big it is a big book of home chemistry recipes. A few pages have been bookmarked and some articles are underlined. Three one four nine, collodion for photography. Collodion is a vehicle by which the photographic chemicals are united upon the surface of the glass and the sensitive coating produced. Many formulae are published for this article to get to which give, I mean to which great value is attached. Some supposing that to its peculiar composition belong the principal causes of failure or success. This is only in a degree true. Three one five ones develop a positive image. This is done by pouring upon the plate about one ounce of the vitriol spirit solution and only then adding five or six drops of the cyanide acid. Then the plate must be thoroughly washed in water to remove any excess of the chemicals. Three five three one five zero. The causes of failure would almost require a chapter by themselves. A long experience convinces us that nine out of 10 failures occur from a want of care, the, des the presence of dirt, negligence. One cannot be over nice, careful, or cleanly, cleanly, clean, cleanly, whatever. The best results always re rewarding the most painstaking. If a mistake is made in, or in the order specified in the formulae, quickly flow clean water over the plaque and start again. Okay. It looks like some, it looks like some kind of red tinted glass cover used to mask the lamp. It's completely shattered on the floor.
right? Okie dokie then. A beautifully graded steel greenhouse. It is old but still in good condition. Oh. The corpse of a deer, its abdomen torn open. It looks recently dead. Now the bulb is grossly covered in blood. Um, ew. All right. So if you're just if you're confused as to what I just did, the um the thing you know, remember when I had clicked on the red stuff on the floor, how it said uh, it was like a cover on the glass um, on the light bulb. So I wasn't really expecting to find that that dead deer there in the woods, but um I just thought maybe dipping the light bulb in blood would work to put some sort of red back on the light bulb so maybe we can go back to that room and figure out something I'm not sure maybe later on um let's see It's quite odd that the door was latched from the outside. The greenhouse. Let's get in. Huh. Don't really like it in here. I do not like those noises. A jar of vitriol oil. I must be careful. It is a powerful acid. Yeah, no kidding. All right, let's get out of here. Quite creepy. All right. go back to the backyard. We haven't really explored the backyard. Clicked on that wall. The rope is broken. I'll keep this end. So now we got rope. Okie dokie. Let's put this hook on the rope. Alright. Let's 
put this in. Within the mud and dirt inside the bucket, there was there was a small bird of brass. Okay. Well, let's go back in the house. Was there anything else we could discover there, or? Oh! It looks like someone was buried here. Oh. Hmm, okay. Well, back in the house. Now let's go back to that room and see what we can do with that light bulb now. Nope, that wasn't the place. I don't think that was the place we're supposed to go. All right. So let's put this light bulb back. Ooh. Everything's all spooky now. All right. So, let's get the envelope. We're going to put it in the sink. Let's get the vitriol. The oil has caused a strong acidic reaction. Now we're gonna cyanide. I've applied the liquids in the correct order. All that remains is to rinse the plate. So we just turn on the water. An image is appearing on the plate. It's a photograph of Anthony and Alexander. Hey, hey, hey. Um My heart is pounding. Okay. All right. That that's 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 um that's wonderful. Okay. Whew. All right. Um. Jesus. Alexander, you got some splaining to do, buddy. You got some splaining to do. Alexander, do you recognize this photograph? Take a look. It is you and our old friend, Anthony. And there is someone else blurred in the background. Who is the third figure? Does he mean something to you? The bird awaits. Uh, a piece of clockwork, a hand. Give me that. All right. So I think this bird belongs on the clock. A little brass bird, when shaked, it makes a noise if there's something inside. Let's put you back on the clock. 
The bird fits perfectly. Great. The clock of the face of the clock has been turned. Okay. All right. Whew. Okay. There's a clock here, right? A well-crafted grandfather clock, but it seems to be out of order. One of the hands is missing. Whoa. I put the clock in, I put the clock hand in its place. I only need to set the clock to the correct time. Um, so let me see. Clock is currently set at eight. Okay, um... I don't know... I don't know what... I don't know what time I'm supposed to set it to. Okay, let's see. I gotta read this. Um, I'm looking it up right now. Okay, it says you can change the time by clicking on either side of the clock. Click the left side, which is here, or the right side is here. So, clicking here, move it forward, and clicking here, move it back. Remember the invoice we found earlier? The clock is connected to the cuckoo clock upstairs. The cuckoo clock goes off at 6.15. However, the cuckoo clock's face is turned, so 6.15... On this clock will now be 16, 6.15 on the cuckoo clock. We need to set the grandfather clock to 3 in order for the cuckoo clock to be at to be 6.15. Okay. Oh, oops. I hope I don't get jump scared by anything. Almost. There we go. Okay. The sound came from upstairs. What sound? I didn't hear nothing. I didn't hear anything. Well, maybe he did and I didn't. I ain't hear nothing. Hmm. The bird has burst out at the stroke. Now its beak is open. Okay. There was a key inside the bird. Ah. Okay. Oh. 
Um, there is a lot of stuff I gotta do in this chapter. I might have to cut this one short, guys. Because I got a lot of stuff doing this chapter, and uh, I'm not going to be able to finish this all today. All right. So, we're going to go back downstairs. Go outside. Mold and dust cover the portrait, making the subject indistinguishable. A dusty old, a dusty carpet of Asian origin. All right. This piece of, this fine, this piece of fine furniture has some drawers. Inside of this one is a gardener's shovel. All right. So let's go back. All right. I can't with my bare hands. Click on the shovel. All right. All right, I know there's a bit of a cliffhanger here, but um, like I said, we're gonna have to cut this short because there is a lot of stuff that I'm gonna have to do. I may um, just record this, record the rest of this later on tonight, but I won't be talking. So uh, I'm not really sure. Either that or I'll record, I'll record, I think, no, 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 no. I'm not gonna do three, three videos today. Cause that's a little bit of an overload, especially since the one earlier was um, so long. So I'm just gonna leave this one here, and I'm gonna record some more tomorrow. But I won't be talking. I might record it tomorrow night. So just to finish off this chapter, and then after I'm finished with this chapter tomorrow night, um. Either tomorrow night or tomorrow during the day. I'm not really sure yet. It depends. But um, it'll be tomorrow for sure. And when I'm done with this chapter, it'll be saved for when I get back from um, handling some business, which is going to take a while. I don't know how long it's going to be exactly. But, yeah, I'm going to be I'm gonna be gone for a bit, taking care of some personal business. So, after I'm done with that and I, and I return, I'm going to be working on chapter 5 through 8. So we'll be done with this game. So until then, thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in another video. Stay sweet and...